Hey everybody, it's uh, CJ Miller, and uh, I'm in my apartment doing a little uh, video for YouTube real, real quick. Uh, basically, <laughs> I know I have no subscribers, uh, I, but it's just a way to uh, have fun, entertain myself. Uh, I do always like to talk about my love of uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, and Bossier City, uh, the, the metro area that is my home that I proudly call home. Okay, so I want to talk about my excitement for the upcoming uh, blockbuster movie season. I love uh, action movies. I particularly, particularly, I get tongue-tied there, particularly love, um, you know, the superhero movies, you know, the Marvels, the DC. Um, I have to say, you know, it's not really a competition. I've collected comic books since I was a child in the 80s. You know, I'd have my little pocket change and I'd go to the K&B drugstore in Mont St. Vincent. Uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, whenever whenever I had a little a little allowance or whatever, that was my thing. You know, that, that, you know pick up a little trinket or two, uh, maybe shop for some candy or something like that. But definitely, I wanted to get my latest editions of uh, my favorite comic books. And that, that ranged from... Uh, you know, Spider-Man to uh, Superman to uh, Wonder Woman. My favorite was uh, V. It was a, it was a mini series uh, in the early '80s, and uh, you know, on on TV and uh, TV movies, and spun off into a into a series and everything. But it, uh, it and then after that, it was like you know they did some comic books uh, uh, with DC comics and uh i think only about 16 episodes and uh there were some corresponding novels and everything but you know we know this is the era of uh superhero movies you know there, there was there were the uh the superman movies in in the 70s and 80s and uh the batman movies at the at the end of the 80s going into the 90s uh and then we had like some x-men movies but we really didn't have, you know, the big heroes, the big ones, after after uh, Schumacher's uh, turn at Batman until uh, uh, until the Millennium, uh, when the uh, uh, Tobey Maguire uh, uh, Spider-Man movies uh, started up, and we hadn't seen Spider-Man. Uh, at the cinema since, well, never, really, <laughs> uh, but not on TV since the 70s, you know, so, um, yeah, I'm really excited, I'm really excited for 2022, uh, there are, because my, my favorite uh, are, are the DC characters, you know, that's the, uh, I grew up, Saturday morning cartoons, you know, the Super Friends, and then They'd play again later on. Uh, they'd replay in the afternoons when I'd come home from school. And it was like, oh my God, this is entertaining. And and that was, was kind of like, uh, yeah. It was just just before the, uh, uh, you know, the Transformers, He-Man kind of thing. Uh, you know, we still had, we still had the, the, the Justice League of the Super Friends or whatever, and then they they transitioned that into the Superpowers team, and uh, after that the Saturday morning cartoon uh, superhero kind of like faded away. But uh, yeah, they they these characters have always been really really dear to my heart. The DC characters uh, uh, of the Justice League in particular. So uh, yeah, we get. Um, Coming out, you know, we're, we're going to get the Batman movie. There was going to be a Ben, ben Affleck, and then uh, that uh, did not work out. Uh, and so I'm interested. I, I'm, I don't know that I'm going to really love it as much as I love the, uh, the other uh, incarnations of, of, of Batman, but then I have always been pleasantly surprised. Uh, so this is, you know, promises to be kind of grittier and, and more noir and everything. So we're looking forward to that one. Uh, the, uh, 
kind of like the post-origin. It's kind of like he's already Batman, but there's kind of a, it's kind of an origin as to he's, he's on his catharsis, but that's the great thing about these hero movies. It's, 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 it's always got to be about a journey uh, that takes place inside the characters. Otherwise, it's just melodrama, which is great, but you're not going to fill up uh, two and a half, three hours uh, of a movie uh, with the, with the, you know, uh, with the melodrama, you've got, you've really got to put some sort of realistic emotional content into these characters. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes that gets, uh, uh, sometimes that gets missing in, in some, uh, action movies, uh, of the superhero variety, comic book, uh, lore and everything. But, um, all in all, I kind of, I kind of generally find myself pleased, um, one thing I think that the Batman movie is going to do maybe is give us a little intake, a little insight, I should say, into the characters that are not, uh, the Batman, you know, uh, they're going to give us maybe some in insight into some sideline characters that are not just the, the hero and the villains, because there's a rogues gallery in this one. Uh, or the or the beginnings of one, but um, and I think they're planning like a couple of sequels and then uh, some spinoff series, uh, you know, for the uh, DC Hub uh, that plays on HBO Max, which is specifically the reason why I bought HBO Max was for the DC Hub, you know, that I that I subscribe to it on a monthly basis. But okay, so that's kind of cool. I'm looking forward to that. But we're also getting look. Uh, uh, a Black Adam movie, uh, which is kind of, I'm kind of, I don't know. I kind of would have liked to have seen this, this beginning of the, uh, I would have liked to have seen him first come along, this character first come along as, uh, an anti-hero slash, uh, arch villain to to uh the flash i think it would have been interesting to see uh that feud play out uh maybe we'll get some of it in back uh, uh, uh you know flashbacks or something like that but i don't know uh but it, but it's it's kind of cool it's going to be a good movie it, it's you know like i said it, it, he's he's not like a major character but they're but they're making them one, you know. I mean, they're they're bringing them up. If you if you take a character and you turn it and you put it part of the DC, what we what the fans call the DC expanded universe, you know, it's 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 a major thing. So it's going to be a major blockbuster. So uh, yeah, um, one one that's really gonna have have us fans really looking forward to. Uh, the 2022 movie season is The Flash, which is which is coming up uh, this year, uh, which has been a long time coming. Uh, they've been talking about this one since like uh, Batman versus Superman, which is like uh, maybe four or five years after Man of Steel. Uh, in, in, in the delivery to the theaters, uh, it, it begins actually maybe 18 months after the events of... Uh, Man of Steel, but, uh, but then, so anyway, <clears throat> this is the one that's really going to, we're starting to get mention of, uh, the multiverse, which we hear that in, you know, I know that the Marvel movies have been addressing this first, but, uh, you know, and DC did not introduce the concept, uh, in the 1980s, in the comic books, that's that's a multi-dimensional, multiverse kind of thing. That that's something that's been uh, theorized in, uh, you know, theoretical physics, uh, like forever, for as long as people have been able to wrap their minds around that kind of thing. But DC Comics was the first one to use it as sort of a house cleaning of their uh, character inventory and to, st and to straighten up their timelines and, and to pull it all together and to basically justify the different uh, changes that would happen at DC, uh, the different writings and the different versions of the different characters. I, 
maybe, maybe I could look back then and I could say, you know, maybe it wasn't necessarily, well, crucial to, to, I mean, the readers, you don't really have to explain to the readers uh, that, hey, different uh, writers are going to have different interpretations, but they wanted to do a cleaning up at DC in the, in the 1985, 1986 season. And so everything that happened was a crisis on infinite earths or it was a crisis on infinite earths tie in and it was a big massive thing it was great i I devoured as many issues as i could uh i wasn't too thrilled with the cw arrowverse uh interpretation of it but you know it was fun i watched it i watched shows uh that i don't normally watch uh just so i could tune in to tie-ins uh, with what was going on, the, the different crossovers. But, um, and so, uh, during, during that, we got a, a cameo of uh, Ezra Miller's Flash uh, meeting up with the CW Flash show. You know, it was kind of cool. Uh, I'm really excited for this Flash movie because it, this is kind of do it. He's, he, you know, he's going to, you know... Uh, try to uh, retcon by going going uh, through time to to solve the uh, the murder of his mother the death of his mother and to clear his father's name I think that's the motivation and then from there we don't know what all but it's going to be really big and important to the DCEU it's gonna I think be the uh, I think I think it's going to be that this cinematic universe's uh version of events in which it cleans up its various interpretations of the storylines or whatever i really love the uh zack snyder movies uh they kind of started they kind of started this out this whole like uh, unofficial expanded universe and we wouldn't have the dc movies today without zack snyder uh, and really with, uh, you know, the, it's, it, it, for me, it kind of started with the, uh, uh, I want to say the Dark Knight trilogy uh, of the Batman. Batman Begins, the Dark Knight, and the Dark Knight Rises. I think those are the three that kind of started this tone uh, of, of the darker, grittier, uh, more realistic view of the of the hero Without that, we wouldn't have even gotten the the Joker movie, which was uh, unofficially not part of the extended universe. But as we fans know, everything DC, if it's not directly connected uh, to the DC expanded universe, it is uh, in a universe of its own that's part of the multiverse. And that's been clear Ever since they drowned it, drummed it into my little head when I was a kid in 1985, you know, middle school, reading these comics in detention, uh, in between reading Stephen King's short stories, you know, The Night Shift, that was the Stephen King book that, that I, I kept on hand and read, and, and you know. So anyway, uh, then <laughs> we have, uh, so I mentioned... Uh, yeah, there's a couple of other movies. We got, uh, let's see, The Batman. We've got, uh, ooh, yeah, there's two more. Uh, we've got The Batman, Black Adam, The Flash, Aquaman. There, there's an Aquaman sequel that's going to come out in 2002. Tw- 2022, I should say, uh, uh, to correct myself. 2022, I loved the first Aquaman movie, the first Aquaman standalone movie. It was... Uh, within the DC universe, it, it referenced the events of Justice League. Um, yeah, uh, so I'm excited to see what they're going to do with that. I haven't seen uh, too much in in, in the uh, in the releases, in the press releases, or anything other than the fact that hey, it's going to be uh, wild. It actually was one of the 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 better received. Uh, movies uh of the of the of the dc variety dceu um you know critics don't necessarily love these movies uh 
and a lot of these movies basically they speak to the fans you know so it's it's those of us who are fans of the characters we're the one keeping we're the ones keeping these movies uh, alive and everything like that so when it when when it's right it's right and when it's not right we we don't mind saying so but even then we usually love that there's a movie even if even if there's some flaw in it uh you know, and I don't mind the different takes. I don't want mind the different uh, views of the characters. Um, there should there should be some catharsis to these characters, and, and th- these happen over time. Uh, when we last left off with uh, Aquaman, he uh, had become the uh, the ocean master, basically. You know, I, I, you know. At least the king of Atlantis, and I don't know if he's going to continue the mantle of Ocean Master because maybe what he's going to do is he's going to be like, you know what? There's like what six or seven kingdoms or whatever of this of the of the oceanic world. So go on about your business. But also, I guess people now know that there's Atlantis. You know, I mean, you, you had that kind of disruption on on the ocean. It's going to get picked up by satellites and stuff. You know, that you know, uh, big war underneath the sea uh you know seven armies fighting un- underwater that's going to cause some uh, waves you know <laughs> so um yeah uh i think uh we're we're uh, kind of approaching a point in the world where you know we're getting used to having in in the in the in the characters in their world you know they're getting used to the fact that there are metahumans or superheroes uh and and supervillains and uh yeah so um i really do i really do love this and i do think i'm not going to give up hope on this and i don't know if it's going to i don't know if it's going to be the the same continuity that was originally planned or not but i really do think at one point we're gonna have to have that really, really big, momentous um, movie. You know, we we still don't have that. We have a little bit of a Justice League uh, where people come together and 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 they kind of like uh, shut down. But we just have not gotten our big baddie yet. That being Dark Side. You know. Uh, we did get the anti monitor in in the c w uh you know arrowverse, but like I said, I don't really watch those shows but uh uh re- with regularity but yeah, it's like um I remember in the comic books I'll tell you this uh this is played out very differently the reason wh- the reason the anti matter the anti monitor was defeated in the comic books is because uh you know the members of the Justice League in Earth Prime. I mean, they went and they they beseeched him, and they said, "Listen, this is this is coming after us. This antimatter universe is wiping everything away, and you're in line. You're gonna you're gonna have to deal with this." And so it was due to in the view. I don't know if you're gonna let uh, if 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 they would let. Uh, Dark side be this powerful in the cinematic universe, but in the comic books, uh, it was it was uh, <laughs> it was uh, Dark Side's Omega beams uh, that really neutralized uh, the Anti Monitor enough so that he could be defeated by the combination. Like they could not have defeated him without that, and there and there were still about two or three issues left in which they had to like okay now we've got to figure out how to stop the world from becoming you know like uh yeah it was you know at the end of the series it was just one world you know and one universe i guess i guess uh but every but every glimpse of possibility after you bring everything together every every possible outcome spawns another universe so it's really never you never really clean it up sorry dc because they had it, they had they had like a perfect continuity at the end of that series, um, but yeah. Uh, so Aquaman's coming out. Uh, then there's the Super Pets, which are going to be like the Super Pets of the of the 
Justice League. Now, that's a DC movie, but I think it's going to be more of the animated variety. What I think is good about that is it's going to maybe going to capture some younger fans that maybe aren't in tune with these characters. You know what I mean? So that we can like introduce some of these concepts uh, to uh, kids and just give them a fun time, you know, super pets, right? You know, uh, so that's kind of cool. Because like I said, it, it, this really was, it, this, this, these really were fun characters when I was a kid. That's why like, when I say I don't mind some of the different uh, takes on the characters, you know, we had the more serious uh, Wonder Woman in uh, Batman versus Superman. And then we had uh, uh, in, in Justice League, she started to lighten up. And then, of course, we got like the uh, Zack Snyder release, at which she was really kind of not too light <laughs> you know? but uh but we did get um uh um do you know wonder woman 1984 which was a fun ride it was it was great it was it was it didn't take itself extremely seriously and it really rem reminded me of the tone of the uh 1970s uh wonder woman you know the uh the, the zaniness and everything of that tone which did play uh in uh heavy rotation and reruns throughout the throughout the early 80s you know uh so yeah it, it, it fit right in uh with that with that you know um and then you know so I, I don't mind that. I, I don't mind that the different movies have different flavors for different people who who like different tones in their movies, different different tastes or whatever. You know, so I, I, I never minded that too much. And then there used to be people they would complain about the, uh, uh, and I'm just talking about DC. I I still love the Marvel movies, but I will just say that there were people that talked about the darkness and the and the uh, you know the the tragedy of. Uh, some of the Zack Snyder uh, movies early on, and it's like, and then they would compare, and they would say, "Well, Marvel's all fun and everything, but dude, some of these Marvel movies are uh, dark as hell." You know, like I mean, they, you know, so uh, yeah, um, uh, Infinity War. I mean, that you really that was dark. <laughs> you know, uh, and then, you know, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. And then, uh, I'm just, I'm just really excited. We're going to get five different DC movies this year. Uh, starting next month, uh, on the third, March the third with, uh, the Batman. So, uh, I will definitely be talking about those. I will be trying to not spoil it. I will say one thing that's interesting. I'm seeing in the in the independent movie uh, database cast list that uh, Harley Quinn is gonna, is there, but I'm not. I don't know. It may just be if this is if this is playing in sort of the met, real world meta, you know, kind of a meta thing. This this meta Batman, or, or, or then they may be looking at. Uh, some takes of the Snyderverse and the things that have spawned off from the DC expanded universe as the TV, you know, the movie version or the TV version of the heroes or something. This is not something that's, that's not been done before. John Carpenter did this, uh, with the Halloween movie. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, Halloween and then, uh, then, uh, Dana Hill and, they all went on to make Halloween 2 in 1981 or, you know, somewhere around there. And that was great. But then it came time to do the third movie. And I think they they did Season of the Witch. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to turn this into an anthology uh, movie series. And uh, it did not work because we were expecting, you know, the slasher Michael Myers. What happened in this movie though season of the witch uh and check it it's, it's a movie that's great in its own right but it's not the michael myers slasher movie that we expected 
But what happened was this Halloween night, there was going to be like a major thing, like a major promotion with the Halloween mask, the Silver Shamrock Halloween mask. And it was going to happen at a certain time after the showing or during the showing of the original uh, John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978. So, so the movie went meta, and so it would not surprise me if that's what the Batman is going to do. Uh, go meta, you know. With uh, And then there is, there are a couple of, uh, in the cast list, there's a couple of surprises because they do have some, uh, some people that are like uh, listed in the cast, but their characters are not uh, described yet. But they're in the, you know, so maybe we'll get uh, a glimpse of, of, I mean, there are twins that are playing characters, but we don't know who they're playing. Uh, and so maybe they'll be, they'll be playing associates of Two-Face, who's not necessarily mentioned. I mean, there's, why have, my, why make a, a nearly a three-hour movie, two-and-a-half to three-hour movie, a, and feature just one or two challenges? So we got... Falcone, who's going to be, he's a villain uh, for Batman. He's not, he's not a super villain, but he, he's, he's, you know, if you want to think about it in Gotham, that the, they're trying to, you know, stop crime in Gotham, you know, uh, you know, Batman and, and his cohorts and everything. So uh, really the, the organized crime and the, and the crime bosses and everything, they are the villains. They are the big villains, you know, and, um, uh, even if they're not super villains or they don't have the, they don't have the, the, you know, yeah, I, I, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's just interesting. It's interesting to me. I love this. I love that this is going to take like a detective noir look. They're looking primarily in here at the Riddler, who's going to be the big baddie. Again, a guy who, who's not fraught with super superpowers, but neither is Batman. He's just got a lot of cool toys, you know. As was said in uh, 1989, uh, Batman, Jack Nicholson's uh, uh, Joker, was like, where does he get those marvelous toys or wonderful toys or whatever whatever the line was? I don't know. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm super psyched, super excited. Uh, I've talked way too long on this topic, but I'm so excited for it. And I guess the reason why I'm thinking about it is like I was uh, looking at some stuff on DC Hub. Man, it's like, uh, it, it, it doesn't have like everything that is DC, but it's got most of what is DC, you know. It kind of combined the best of DC Universe when it, when it first started, and then when it got... Uh, combined with HBO Max and it became the DC Hub. It kind of took those blockbuster movies and then combined that took the best of everything. And we even got like the original Wonder Woman. We got like you know from the, from the from the from the seventies. You know that like all the all this all the all the series. We've got like the entire uh, cartoon, the Super Friend kind of thing or whatever. I don't know. I'm just in a DC Comics. Uh, frame of mind, DC hero frame of mind, because I know in two weeks I will be sitting in a theater watching the Batman with a, with some with some cautious optimism. But then I'm usually surprised and I'm usually given a, a thrill ride at these movies, and I usually love them, even as even as uh, professional movie critics kind of come down to them, you know. And then there are some people who just like uh, pander and and they'll like tell the fans whatever we want to hear. But uh, honestly, the fact of the matter is these movies are entertainment and they can be tools to, to address things, but they're really entertainment. And uh, even, even art, the highest art uh, is there for us to enjoy. I'm not. I'm not saying these movies are on the level of, uh, say, uh, Mona Lisa, you know, hanging, hanging, hanging in, in the Louvre somewhere or something like that. If if that's where it is, you know, it's like. Um, but maybe in a way, yeah. I mean, they they put as much work into to to making these movies as they would into making the 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 greatest, uh, uh, you know 
uh, sculptures, you know. So, uh, yeah, um, ultimately, to convey messages and everything like that, there's always subtext in, in everything. There, there's always subtext. But the, but the primary reason these things exist, um, art, uh, novels, great books, movies, comic books, all of it, uh, the primary reason it's there is so that we can be entertained and find some enjoyment, you know, and uh, it, 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 in these characters and kind of fall in love with them and be taken away into a little fantasy world. And it's fun. It's some escapism. So sometimes, oh, my God, you know, viewers need to maybe just relax and just enjoy it. And sometimes critics need to shut up and just let the fans enjoy it. So... You know, if you want to pick apart and find uh, every needle in a haystack that does not uh, belong uh, in that particular stack of hay, you're going to find it in any movie. Uh, I, I've got uh, an OCD eye that picks through and can find just about any flaw. I'm really, really great at Easter eggs. Uh, problem with that, sometimes you see Easter eggs even when they're not there. You know, if you get if you get that mind like like I do, you know maybe you, you want to maybe just kind of like remember, hey, you're here to enjoy. So, uh, and of course, as I say that, I'm mostly talking to myself because um, I do. I intend to go and enjoy uh, these uh, these movies. These at least four of the movies coming out, I'm going to see in the theater. Maybe I'll see the Super Pets. Uh, Maybe I'll see that. Maybe I'll maybe I'll take my uh, little nieces and nephews. Maybe I'll take some of them to see a movie. You know, something that that is going to be appropriate for them. So we'll see. Hey guys, uh, all of you uh, people who uh, are not there because I have no subscribers. I love you anyway, and uh, have a good night. Bye.